Uh, welcome to our class. This is POP 101. And uh, this first lecture is essentially just to introduce myself and give you an overview of the course you are going to be taking. Uh, my name is Professor Oketo Gabriel Moti, Professor of uh, Public Sector Management in the Department of Public Administration, University of Abuja. The details of my email, uh, phone number, and my office, and when you can see me, you will see them on the screen. Please adhere to that. Next is just to give you an overview of this course. In this course, we are just going to ensure that we give you the fundamentals of public administration because it is a foundational course. It's a course that will give you the foundation for all that you are going to be doing concerning public administration. So we are going to be looking at some of the conceptual theories that are behind public administration and all the framework and the elements and give you some practical examples of such issues so that eventually you will know what to do. Uh, the complete outline is there. Those are the things we'll be dealing with, trying to define what it is, looking at the differences between public admin and other uh, disciplines, we'll be looking at the principles, the nature, the scope of the discipline, all that are going to be uh, taken through the course. We also give you an idea of how I'm going to assess you in this course. You are going to be having an assessment. I will show you what to do. You are going to be having being graded in this course. I will show you what we are going to do. In terms of uh, assessment, I will give you two uh, major total, I mean, total marked assignment. It means you will do those assignments and return to me. I will mark them and record your marks. Within the course, we'll be taking some exercises on your uh, computer-based test and all that will be recorded. But essentially, at the end of this course, you'll be taking a final exam. And we expect that you will be in class because attendance will be taken and the regulation of the university, if you are less than 70%, you may not be allowed to take our exam. In terms of uh, uh, grading you, your attendance will take five marks, your discussions, your assignments, 10 marks, other assignment 15 marks and then exam 70 marks so you are expected to score maximum of 70 i mean 100 marks in this uh, course however the university stipulates that if you get 40 percent out of the 100 you pass less than that you may come back and meet us again uh, we want you to obey certain rules when you come into this class please observe these rules they are for you ensure you are in the class Ensure you maintain certain form of responsibility, commitment, and read all that will be told to you to read. Uh, we also want to ensure that there is no dishonesty. So if I give you an assignment, yes, you can collaborate with your friends, but let us know it was collaboration. Don't copy people's text and send in. Don't copy people's answers and send in. Those things are considered dishonesty as far as this course uh, is concerned. Now, this is just the introduction. You will read the details as you have seen them on the slides. Uh, the real thing now is for us to move into study session one. And study session one, I will be taking the meaning of public administration. Now, this is study section one, the meaning of public administration. In this, we are going to look at the objective. And in the objective, I'll say that at the end of my discussion with you, you should be able to define administration. You should be able to define public administration. You should be able to appreciate the relationship between politics or policy and public administration, the relationship between uh, administration and organization. And finally, we will look at the nature of public administration and be able to explain that. So what is administration? Really, administration comes from two Latin words. One of them is art. The other one is ministre. And when you put the two together, it means to manage. So when we are dealing with administration, we are looking at the management of the affairs of people, looking after people or serving people. 
So when you are talking about administration, you are talking about giving service. So administration refers to giving service to the people. Now, it takes place in every kind of organization you will find. Whether it is in a family, whether it's in a little society, you will find administration taking place there. So when two or three people, like we say, cooperate together, they want to accomplish a task, there is an element of administration. So first of all, understand that we have administration before public administration. So now that you have understood what administration is, to serve, to manage, to administer the affairs of people, let us go to the next uh, concept, public administration. Now, what is public administration? So, when we look at all those activities that are carried out by government in order to manage the people and to manage the affairs of the state, this is what we refer to as public administration. Because here, after you have understood that administration is to serve, to manage, you add that word public to it, and it makes it public administration. When you add that word public, which refers or connotes governmental, then public administration refers to governmental administration. Administration that has to do with the activities of government to take care of its own uh, people. So that is essentially what we refer to as public administration. When government carries out all activities that they do carry out in order to handle the affairs of people within its jurisdiction, we refer to that as public administration. Now, let us look at other definitions. I've decided to give you two basic classical definitions. Yes, one of them is uh, by Lothar Golick. You have already seen that. That is Lothar Golick here. He defined administration. And because it is his own definition, I want to put it in his own words. It is the administ public administration, he says, is the science of administration which has to do with government. And it concerns itself primarily with the executive part of government. So in most cases, when we are talking about public administration, what comes to the mind of many people is the executive side. Because the executive side implements the policies of government. So we seem to see it more than that. But basically, you know, in your uh, elements of government is that we have three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. So his own definition was more or less pointing to the executive side. The other classical definition is the one given on the man on the right-hand side, Herbert, uh, uh, Herbert Simon. And he said public administration in common usage are the activities of the executive branch, whether it's at the national level, state level, or at the local level. Now, these are classical examples. People who have read, thinkers who have defined this a long time ago, and it still stands the test of time. The next we want to find out for you is that, now that I have defined for you administration, meaning to manage or to serve, and also public administration. When we put the public there, it refers to governmental administration, which gives us the meaning that public administration has to do with the activities of government put together to manage the affairs of the state or people. So now that you have known that, I want you to test yourself. Take your pen, write down in your own words what you understand by public administration. The next subheading we are going to be dealing with is the issue of politics or policy and administration. Remember I told you that public administration carries out policies or implements policies. And that is why the executive arm of government is very essential, critical, and we seem to know it much more better. So what happens? Actually, there is a relationship between politics or policy and administration or public administration. So in public administration, what happens is that arm of government called the legislature. They are the ones who actually do the politicking or set out the policies. And when they set out the policies through the laws that they enact, the executive now implements them. 
That is how public administration works. All the three arms of government are involved. And when administration, public administration or executive implement, if there is any dispute between them, that is the executive and the legislature, or even the people that they are giving this service to, the judiciary now comes in. So there's a relationship between the legislature, which handles the political aspect of government, and public administration itself or administration, which the executive handles in terms of implementing the policies. And like we like I told you when we were defining administration, that administration is found in every organization. What makes it different in the case we are dealing with here is the public, which connotes governmental administration. Therefore, what we see here is that public administration takes place in governmental organization. And we have many governmental organizations. We have ministries, we have parastatas, we have agencies of government, boards, and so on and so forth that are set up. Institutions of learning like the University of Abuja is also part of public administration. So that is where public administration uh, takes place in governmental uh, organizations. Now, what is the nature of public administration? In other words, how do we understand and place public administration? There are two classical or basic views of the nature of public administration. And these two views are one, the managerial view and the integral view. Let us try and look at these views. Now, if you look at them, all the doctrines that have to do with public administration come under these two views. One of them is the integral view that I've told you and the managerial view. Now, the integral view, the managerial view talks about the policy makers and the implementers and mostly deals with the executive and management level of any organization or any governmental setup. But the integral view deals with all sorts of classes of workers within the organization and it takes into cognizance all the methods, all the processes, the supply channel, the procedures for doing all these things in terms of even procurement, the finances, administration, all those activities put together. The integral view blends them and says they are all activities of public uh, administration, in which case it did not uh, classify public administration in a narrow sense as the managerial uh, view tries to do. But further to explain, let me just show you that this is the nature. We have the integral view, we have the managerial view. Under the managerial view, which uh, was uh, led by Luther Golick, they said the work of government is viewed as being done by government, but it is only the managerial functions. The managerial functions in terms of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting, <coughs> and budgeting. Those are the managerial function that they are referring to that constitute the managerial view. But the integral view is saying, no, you have more people handling public administration services. You have those who do manual work, clerks, technical, and even managerial. Put all these activities of all these employees together. These homo I mean, heterogeneous activities combined is what we refer to as public administration. Therefore, we have two views of the nature, the managerial view, the integral view. So we combine all these views, and that gives us the nature of public administration. So you do not say public administration refers to only managers, those in chief executive position, or those who plan, organize, staff, direct, coordinate, or budget. No, the clerks are important. The gardeners are important. The cleaners are important. All activities put together are important in public administration. So, this is what we have done. In this session, 
I have discussed with you the meaning of administration, which is to manage, which is to serve, and public administration, when you add the public, it refers to governmental administration. <coughs> I've also given you two definitions of prominent people that will help you. We also examine the relationship between policy or politics and administration because the politics or policy comes from one arm of government, which is the legislature. They do the policies and the executive implements. When there is dispute, the judiciary takes over and handles that. And administration takes place within all governmental organizations, whether they are ministry, whether they are parastatus or agencies or institutions of higher learning, and so on and so forth. And we concluded by explaining to you the two views of the nature of public administration, the integral view and the managerial view. The managerial view restricts the nature of public administration to the managerial functions that is take place within public organizations. But the integral view says, no, these are not the only activities. We have activities of junior workers and staff. All these put together constitute what we refer to as the nature of public uh, administration. So, the next thing I want you to do, read this, react to this self-assessment exercise. You will do it and hand over to me in three weeks' time. The questions are there for you to read and react to them. You can do some further readings which I have provided for you there so that you get to understand this in addition to the manual that the center has provided. So in our next class, we'll be looking at study session two. Study session two, we'll be looking at the characteristics of public administration. We'll also be looking at the differences and the similarities between public administration and private administration. So I hope to see you in my next class. Thank you very much.